Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Ask OK podcast, coming to you from Studio One. My name's Peter, as some of you know, and I have with me the famous, justly famous, Prof, otherwise known as Oki. Today we've got uh, winter suits for you, gun clubs, a bit about the tailoring process, and of course the Prof's exuberant, not to say outrageous, <laughs> contribution to menswear this evening, or today rather. Um, before we get started, thank you all for tuning in all of you out there in the electronic universe make all of this possible. So thank you very much from all of us at Ask Oki. Now, without further ado, uh, I give you the prof, the human eggplant, I think. <laughs> and what's very interesting is that before we started this evening, we were listening to The Temptations. That is correct. Uh, and I mentioned that this sort of rig is what they would have aspired to back in the day, possibly achieved, possibly not. Tell us about it, Opie. Well, I'm not sure if that's a compliment, but I, 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 oh, no, no. I, I will take De it. No, it definitely us. is. It definitely is. <laughs> I do um, recall old videos, vintage videos of those uh, 70s and 80s groups, and some of the outfits were outright outrageous. Um, as they should, yeah, because yeah, I mean, yeah, these yeah. are performing artists. Yeah, sure. And I think that their tailoring, uh, some of them were very tasteful. Mm -hmm. I, I like Teddy Pendergrass a lot. Yep, um, yep, yep. Uh, Marvin Gaye sometimes wore sort of your basic classic suits. Uh, but every now and then they would wear garish colors yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. But And that's why I say I'm not sure if that's a compliment. Well, this um, I wouldn't call this garish. Uh, Bold, but, but, but not garish. But yes, a lot of those artists were known for wearing very, uh, very loud colors, mm -hmm. even garish colors. Uh, but yes, here we are, Pete. <clears throat> this is um, what I would call, as we were having a conversation mm -hmm. before this, this is what I would call a semi-formal, or sort yeah. of, a, I would say, semi-formal black tie. Yes, it is. Yes. So... Your conventional black tie, which is what we covered in a prior segment, yep. I think it was just the past podcast. Yeah, uh, we talked about evening wear, yes, specifically, um, and we talked about evening wear in the proper formal sense, the traditional sense, traditional yeah. sense. So you're talking about your your dinner suit, mm -hmm. your your dinner jacket, short lapel, big yep. lapel, your monochromes, yep. right? So your your off your off whites or your creams yeah. and and your blacks and the midnight black tux, blues. Typical black tuxedo, or midnight blue tuxedo. Now um, there is also what is known as sort of a semi-formal black tie, yep. and this is where your your dinner jackets really come to play. This mm -hmm. is when mm -hmm. they come out mm -hmm. to play. Mm -hmm. This is this is where they come to shine, and I think. Um, semi-formal affords one a bit more license for sure. creativity. Sure. Whereas with your black tie, you're somewhat confined. Well, you know, you're confined certainly color-wise. Um, you, you may have a yeah. bit of play in terms of how you want to accessorize or even configure well, your let's, outfit. But let's. in terms of color, Right mm -hmm. and the palette and being able yeah. to play, you're very limited in traditional black tie. You are. Am I making sense? Yo, definitely. But uh, there's a picture that, by the time everybody sees this, has probably gone up, um, showing the lapels on one of your dinner jackets. Correct. And it was very, very striking. Right. Lapels, not quite like these, uh, striking in a different way, mm -hmm. and. So you do have, even with the standard dinner jacket, the black one, Correct. or the midnight blue one, you still have options with lapels, which can create quite an, <laughs> excuse me, quite an effect. You know, those, those very pronounced uh, peak lapels that you have on the Correct. other, the black dinner jacket. Yes, yes. And, and, and uh, there have been, um, I, I, I would use the word viscera, um, there's a visceral reaction 
to it. <laughs> and uh, the Sarah, both in a yes. positive and negative yes. sense, you know, there are those who are yes. like, oh my God, that is just absolutely phenomenal. Yes. And compliment your physique because you have broad shoulders yeah. Yeah. and the way the lapels are designed. Obviously, I design yes. everything. Um, the way the design, the, the, the lapels are angled, they point towards the shoulder and emphasize the breath. Oh, indeed, they do. And yes. so yes. if you have an eye for detail or for art of proportion, you pick things like that very uh, quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, some don't, and some just see the size of it, and they're somewhat intimidated by the size of it. And that's yes. why I say yes. it, it, it invites a visceral reaction, both on the positive Yes, I can negative. see that. I can see that. And, and I think, in fact, I think I wrote at the time uh, that not everybody can pull it off. And obviously, for some people, the dinner jacket is a sort of welcome thing because you don't have to worry too much about it. Correct. You, everybody's wearing one, you're wearing one. Correct. And it's a great equalizer in a sense. But this one, which we're calling semi black tie semi formal, semi -formal black, tie. black tie you've got a black tie correct you've got some interesting looking shirt studs what are those cat's eye or something um well this is a shirt we designed uh here at Askoki, and it's it's temp it, the basic template is a dinner shirt so right. a formal shirt and your traditional formal shirt would either have a marcella bib right so if you don't mind me standing up well, go ahead I'm going to stand up just to demonstrate with you here. So a, t a typical dinner shirt would have a Marcella bib. Right. Right here. Mm. Okay. Mm. And, and this is not a typical dinner shirt. No. This is actually a linen shirt. And what we've done is that we've, just going to take we've used the here. platform. This is linen on the right. side. And here we've used Oxford cotton. So, folks, it's, it's a, actually an, an extra ply. Yes. Pasted onto, pasted the, onto the body of the shirt. shirt, yes. You can see where it's stitched on. Yep, there we are. Yep. Okay, so this is Oxford pinpoint cotton. Well, in fact, the, the, the base of the shirt is quite thin. It's linen, so that's yeah, it's linen. Very, but it's just even a thin linen. Right, it's a yes. very thin linen, and this is Oxford cotton. Right. And this has texture. So the yeah. Oxford cotton sort of forms the bib yep. and yeah. gives it sort of that contrast between but it's the, a so the, soft shirt not a hard shirt it's a very soft shirt yeah. and the reason we created something like this was for for semi-formal black tie yeah so it is not as severe no or it's not there no, 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 as your no. typical white uh dinner shirt which no. is sort of either a marcella on the bib yeah. or what do you call those things again a the, pleated like the a pleated, pleated front yes, correct yes, the yes. pleated front which are a little bit uh uh, well, dated or again. Yeah. You know. I had one back in the 80s. Uh, so. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you, I've never owned one, but. Uh, oh, no, I didn't, it didn't have ruffles on it. It just had pleats on it. It just had just pleats, 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 not the, uh, not no, the no, ruffles. No, 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 good Lord, no, no, no. That's for Liberace. That was for Liberace. <laughs> that's something, something no. you might see in The Goodfellas, yeah, in the movie right, The Goodfellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, no, no. But, but, this but is, yeah, so. This is very sure. restrained, very, very subtle, very right. understated, unassuming. And, and what are these studs? Are these. They're not cat's eye. What are they? No, these are onyx. Onyx. Okay. So these are onyx. Okay. I mean, depends on how you're rolling. Some people okay. have them made in like very, very exclusive uh, material. Frightful um, business putting them on, though. No, it's it's very easy actually. So these shirts are made just uh, basically with okay. with two yes, yes, with yes, two yes, buttonholes, yes, 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 and so the 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 um, the studs are removable. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Okay. So it, you just it. remove them and you yes, attach yes. them, and when you have to launder the shirt, you just take the stuff. Ah, okay, got it. Just got the it. same way you would take off the cuff your links. cufflinks. And, and these are onyx as well. Yeah, these are also isn't, isn't these are nice, sterling, sterling silver. Isn't that nice? Is you've got you've got cufflinks and and studs right. which That's sort the whole of point. match, don't they? So this is sterling silver, right? On the edge, mm -hmm. it's edged by it's sort of the edge. It's the, it's the, the base actually is sterling silver, and then the um, the uh, onyx, onyx, stone the, the stone itself is onyx. Yes. Same, yes. same with the cufflinks. So yes. you've got uh, sterling silver base, mm. uh, and this is from Cartier, I believe. Wow, I've owned this for many years. I got wow. this from the Cartier shop in New York many years Probably. ago. These are well over ten years, maybe fifteen years old. 
Really that complex. when you get to my age, ten or fifteen years is not many. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I had visions of sort of forty years ago, but no, 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 ten or fifteen years ago. But uh, just just an aside here. So semi-formal dinner wear. Mm -hmm. um, we stick to the black tie. Correct. And then we have the shirt with the soft but reinforced front. I can mm -hmm. call it that. And very very smart looking this onyx and silver almost an art deco feel to it Correct. and really very nice and, and restrained and then i noticed Oki, yes. that you have a one button roll on this jacket correct so you you've got actually a little so fake it's, button a little it's basically a, a dinner so this is our standard dinner jacket design it is isn't it yes, uh, yes. Our standard one button yeah, yeah, single yeah, breasted yeah. so basically i just converted it's yeah, the same yeah. Same platform, mm. we've just used velvet, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So whereas in the ones we might have looked at in the past, we use Barathea yep. for your conventional yep. black tie, like your mm -hmm. proper mm -hmm. dinner clothes. Mm -hmm. Here we've gone for velvet, yep. which is a very uh, popular fabric for semi from for dinner jackets or smoking jackets. Well, I was going to say, if it had black lapels, it would be a smoking jacket. Black gross grain lapels, possibly. Uh, well, I mean, I think there's a lot of latitude there, especially yeah. when it comes to dinner jackets and smoking jackets, right? Um, mm. There's really sort of a wide berth, and you can mm. employ a lot of license and get true, as creative true. as you true. wish. Here, I wanted to keep things fairly restrained mm. without being dull. So we've Indeed. gone, we've gone with your basic velvet. This is sort of this is from Harrison's, one of our suppliers. Yes, it's just a beautiful, yes. beautiful velvet cotton. It is now. Isn't it? Yes. What we've done is that sort of we've basically given it an edge piping. Well, it's got, I was going to say before you leave the velvet, it's got quite a deep pile, if that's what you call it. Yeah, it's very you'd rich. Call it, yeah. If it's a carpet, you'd call it yeah. a pile. But it is, isn't it? It's very rich, it but really it goes is. down to the quality of the fabric. So, you know, there are velvets that don't have this luster. No, no, no this uh, definitely that has not has it, so, yes. But it, this has sort of, you could see the, the, the color changes with the light. Yeah, it does. And yes, it just yes. sort of shows the, um, yeah. goes to show the It's almost the got quality. a shine to it yeah. when you move in a certain direction, hasn't it? Correct. And then you've got this piping here. So this is what we did is that when we designed this jacket, we wanted to create something that was classic yeah. um, uh, and, and sort of expressive, but not but not, yeah. not yeah. Um, how shall I say this, uh, not uh, flamboyant. Not flamboyant. Not no, flamboyant, no, no, but, but no. expressive, yes, not yes, dull. Yes. So I thought if had we done it in a plain, uh, plain, we could have done plain velvet, of course, you yeah. know, like many. But I thought this, like mm. the, the, the using the uh, satin on the edge. Yes, and you've got the a, piping. Yes, you know, it may, it, 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 because, because this satin is a sort of iridescent, Absolutely. Color to it. You and have you to come close to actually see. Look at it in a certain light, it looks just one color, but if you move it a bit, it, it's it sort shows. of black and mauve, correct, isn't correct, it? Correct, correct. And so, the same thing on these buttons. And we've used it for the yes, piping yes. as well. So some of the details, like the buttons, of course, with our dinner jackets, we use links. So yeah. there are those who use buttons, but I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an advocate. I like, yeah. I, like, I like links because they just... They, they allow the jacket to sit better. Mm -hmm. Like when mm -hmm. you're buttoned that way, right? There's more pressure and tension sure, on sure, the waist. Sure, sure, sure. When you have these links, it allows the front panels to sit. Mm. And so they're hanging from the shoulders and parallel. Yes. So there's not, there's not a lot of pressure. Of no. course, you could shorten this link if you want, the, yes, if you want them to forget. sit a bit closer. But I like them about, about mm. that's about an inch and a half. Or so, yes, about you, two you, inches. You want to show off the shirt front as well. Correct. And Correct. you could, of course, wear a waistcoat. You could wear, for example, or a, a black waistcoat or a cummerbund. Oh, come I'm not a great fan of cummerbunds. Yeah, neither I don't am know I. Why. Neither they am I. sag by the end of the evening. They're sort of falling down. Yeah. But but a black waistcoat, a black evening dress waistcoat. Possibly would you work. could have. It would have worked actually. A black waistcoat yeah, could have been. Yeah. Uh, but you know, again, this is uh, semi-formal. So exactly. You, you know, you want to keep it fun, but a bit light. You want, yes, you want to keep it semi. Exactly, formal. exactly. Now, so. this is in, but these, this closure here. Correct. There was a time when suits had a button that buttoned like this. 
They didn't button like that. Yeah, they buttoned they button together. Like it was called like a one-button roll. Correct, yeah. correct, correct. So, which is sort of essentially the same principle it is, isn't it? as this. Yes, yes. Same principle as Fantastic. this. Fantastic. So, and then we have tartan. We have tartan trousers of the, of the clan McOkey, I guess. <laughs> I don't know which particular estate tartan that is, but it's um, it's a sort of purple version of the black watch. Yes. Purple and blue version of the black watch. Now, you could have done it the other way. You could have a tartan jacket. Correct. And you could have solid purple trousers or um, eggplant trousers, I suppose. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. But I, I think that's, uh, that's a more risky, risky yes, combination. Yes, 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 so, yes. <laughs> that's a more risky combination. Yes. So, <laughs> for the holiday season, which by the time you see it, I think, by the time you see this, I think the holiday season will have passed. But in any case... This is the sort of thing that you want to wear when black tie would be just a little bit too, too much stiff. And you won't look like a waiter okay. if you're wearing one of these. You can tone it down, for example, having smaller lapels. You could do without the piping, and you could just have the velvet jacket. Um, you could also have a jacket this color in, for example, Mohair, which would look fine as well. Yes. But it just perks the whole thing up, and the black tie keeps it a little bit, a little bit formal, a little bit traditional. Great stuff. Very well. Okay. May I? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's Thank sit you. back down here. Thank you. Thank you for, for all of that. Thank you. Thank and, you, Pete. Well, you see, what's interesting for me, and I'm, I enjoy these podcasts as much as I hope our, our audience, that's you out there, enjoys them, is because I learn. And so now I've learned a bit more. The finish, sorry, the piping you said is satin. Yes. Okay. And is that Harrison's as well? Uh, I mean, satin can be sourced from any number of, okay. uh, these are what you call trimmings. Yeah. So right. trimmings like your satin, your buttons. I mean, mm. there are companies who, there are a million companies that, that and, and, and these are things where the commodities essentially, mm. Mm. Um, they're hard. Hard, but you still got to get the hardware. right one, yeah. But you still got to find the uh, right color. You still have to find the right. But very, very most people. I mean, this is not rocket science, no, right? No. So I think most suppliers of of uh, of uh, these trimmings um, usually have decent quality, at least. Provided products. that your tailor or, or your supply, your own supplier has it. Correct. Because if you get that color wrong, you make a mess of the whole thing. Correct. And. And it's easy for those of us, and people like me, for example, to get those sorts of things wrong. You obviously have the eye for it, and I think that's what that's what you've got to have if you're going to be in, in the business. Now, what I wanted to talk about was following this and going from the sublime, not to the ridiculous, but for going from the colorful to the slightly more mundane is winter suits because it's the winter. And I trolled through the cupboard here in Studio One, which, by the way, isn't a case of reaching in. It's a case of walking around and uh, looking at the racks. And I found a couple which I would like to take a look at, if you don't mind. Of and we can dissect them as we usually do. Okay, let's get the, one of these down here. Because this is... Crikey, this is heavy. <laughs> Okay, a three-piece gray suit, um, three roll to two, single-breasted waistcoat, and it weighs about as much as an FN rifle fully loaded. Um, crikey. If nothing else, wearing winter clothes ought to keep you in pretty good physical condition. Correct. Tell us about it. It's beautiful. Well, this is a classic uh, three button, three bu two roll three button mm. jacket, mm. and it's done as a three piece suit. Obviously, yes. Uh, this is a waistcoat, a single breasted waistcoat. Mm. Um, this done without a lapel. Yeah. So just sort of a simple classic waistcoat and a classic full cut full cut trousers. Yes. Uh, the fabric comes from Fox, and this is uh, remember this is one. This was one of your favorites. It, oh, it still uh, is. When yes. we did the the cloth review, yeah, one of yeah, the uh, one that. of our yes. one of our first videos, 
Um, it's a beautiful medium gray with sort of burgundy um, herringbone uh, stripes. Yes. Sort of uh, burgundy herring. It's sort of like a self herringbone with yes. burgundy stripes. And they call this the Cary Grant um, stripe. And what's interesting is that the stripes are single line, and then you've got a sort of double line here, and they're not entirely evenly placed. So you've got two that are far apart, then two that are narrow, closer together, then far apart, then closer together. So Correct. it's not just yeah. the same stripe yeah. all yeah. the way along. Well, I take no credit for that. It's just they, this was a rip, I guess what they call a rip roll. Um, it was something that was worn by Cary Grant. Uh, oh, really? Years ago. Oh, I and, see. Okay. And I think there was some uh, some uh, uh, demand or some kind of mm. uh, petition signed by aficionados, and uh, Fox, uh, Fox was uh, was uh, should I say compelled to rep reproduce? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. should I say compelled or, or as, you know? I'm not sure persuaded. what the or persuaded, persuaded to bring, it, uh, back. To bring yeah. it back, and so they did wow. a limited run in this. I'm not sure if they have much of it left, but um, obviously they've got the recipe, so I'm sure they can rerun this um, as long as the demand is there. Something that you see very often, but I did notice that Dugdale has a couple of pieces with a rather similar design with this maroon stripe, mm -hmm. not the herringbone. And is, is this a flannel? This is a flannel, of course. So There's a herringbone tramline striped mm -hmm. flannel. And as I said, it weighs a ton. And I can guarantee you, whether you live in Chicago, Moscow, Vladivostok, or Toronto, anywhere that it gets down below zero, you're going to find that this is ample. <laughs> if you want to top it with a camel hair coat, be our guest. But definitely you could wear this outside on a winter's day, and I don't think you'd feel the weather at all. Um, it's extraordinary, isn't it? And this sort of suit, uh, I would imagine that you could wear it once a week for about 40 years. You mean in terms of the longevity? Yeah. I mean, you could get a lot of mileage you out of this. You get a lot this, of mileage you know, out of it, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fall winter suit. So, I mean, this is something you could wear. You could wear it two, three times a week. And where would you wear this pattern? Is this something that you would wear to an office of or course it is okay. of course of course i mean not um not to uh, perhaps not to a board meeting yeah but this is something you could wear to an easily if you were a lawyer or, or a banker or that sort of thing an accountant uh, an accountant or yeah, any yeah. sort of office uh, base or an executive mm. or even sort of a middle manager i sure, mean this sure. is a very classic Classic flannel. Yeah. Um, it doesn't get more classic than this. No. The only difference is that it's got this maroon, as you would call it. Uh, I call them burgundy, burgundy. Yeah. Uh, stripes, which make them a little bit more playful. Uh, but otherwise, where those stripes are not present, this would be just a basic medium gray self herringbone. It'd be dull. It'd still be per uh, super cloth. Yeah, but it'd, and be, still make it'd a super be a bit, suit. It'd be a bit dull, yes. But it would be dull. Yeah. And I think this is an interesting point, Oki, that a lot of people ignore, is that a suit doesn't have to be dull. Now, you've demonstrated this on many occasions here in Studio One with the, the um, Prince of Wales, the uh, chestnut check suit, also from Fox. And everybody, just so you notice, the waistcoat has the pleats, the reverse pleats, which extend down over the trouser pleats, and the pattern matching, something of which we're extremely proud here, Daskoki, it's pattern matched all, all the, the way, way down. Through. But I mean, aside from all of that and the, the, the finishing and everything, the reason I wanted to bring it out was to suggest to people that something that you can get for the winter and 
it doesn't have to be just dark gray mm -hmm. or dark blue. actually i want us to i want to pick up on that i think you bring up a good point uh this idea that a suit has to be dull um, or this i guess i would call it a stereotype mm -hmm. uh, and people see suits as these sort of uh, as, a, as a chore yeah, almost yeah, sort of yeah. as, as a sentence. Yeah, that's right, um, yes, yes. And I yes. think... As a punishment, yeah. You know, if one gets imaginative, it just requires a bit of imagination, um, mm. you could get really, really creative yes. with yes. Uh, what people would call formal wear, which is really yeah. sort of street language for a regular suit, yeah. lounge suit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could get very, very creative. And like you said, I've, I've at least tried to demonstrate that. Oh, yeah, I think, um, and I think successfully. I I've think tried successfully to demonstrate so. that. And you could do that either in the choice of cloth, yeah. uh, the choice of the fabric, uh, even if you opted to remain fairly classic in the cut and in well, the aesthetic. Yes, yes. Uh, there are a lot of ways, you know, the way you accessorize the outfit, yeah. you know, yeah. your choice of shirts, um, ties, mm -hmm. pocket squares. Mm -hmm. Uh, even your socks are yes. a missed opportunity. I always yep. say, yep. you know, socks are a missed opportunity by many to uh, lift up an outfit, an otherwise dull outfit. So, yes. you know, I don't wear, know where people get this idea that wearing a suit is sort of essentially is a sentence to anonymity. Uh, and it isn't. There is a lot of room for individuality and for self-expression, um, even... even while wearing a suit. Yes, because you see, you, you, could, you could go in one direction, which would be to say, get a very bright blue or um, sky blue suit or something like that, or something with a very bold check, which, which is one, one way to do it, probably the wrong way. I think the point is that there are places where you simply can't wear a bright, a bright blue suit. Mm -hmm. um, but you could, as you say, wear something like this, you find, certainly the ready-to-wear market, this sort of pattern is not normally available. And I think that's one of the difficulties. It's awfully easy to get um, one of the many, many dark gray, slightly darker gray, slightly lighter gray, pick and pick maybe, bird's eye possibly, and that's about it, and stripe, and that's about as radical as it gets. But something like this, really does perk the whole thing up because it gives it a bit of color as opposed simply to being gray. Correct. And even, having said that, when you get into the quality of fabric like what Fox makes, you're not just talking about boring old gray anymore mm -hmm. because they manage to make, they infuse this fabric with different shades of gray. Say 15 or 16 ounces. I would say so. I would say 15. It feels more like 20. No, 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 no that's not 20 ounces. Really? Oh, I must, it's, be, it's, I must it's, be getting It's feeble. three pieces, so, I mean, yes, also true. you feel the extra weight of the, of the waistcoat. Ah, well, let's get this out of the way and take a look at another one, a little similar, but again... It's got some interesting features. It is not your typical gray striped suit. Why not? First of all, go Well, ahead. this is a chalk. chalk this stripe. would be a chalk, a uh, shadow chalk stripe, because um, a chalk, uh, chalk stripe um, has equally spaced large stripes. Uh, this has... Uh, large stripes with a thin stripe in it again. It, it has, hasn't it? Yes. You know, this is yes. um, this is from Fox. Again, this is one of your special edition uh, flannels that they created. Um, I'm not sure if they have any of it left. But again, if if you get to this when they launch them, you could sort of. Uh, but it's mm. it's a very classic standard. It is darker gray. That yeah. was sort of a medium gray, but this is a darker gray flannel with with a standard gray chalk. And this is very... You don't think this, this is, is a, a rope stripe? It's a bit of a rope stripe if you sort of go a bit deeper, if you look. But a lot of chalk stripes are rope striped. Ah, OK. 
okay. because again because of the way it's woven yeah, right yeah, 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 especially yeah. if it's flannel yeah, yeah. um of course I, i'm a huge uh, i think uh, i think uh, chalk stripes on on worsted cloth just looks cheap it just looks very cheap i just i just Interesting. i wouldn't recommend that you wow. know what i mean like worsted worsted suiting with with chalk stripes yes it just looks very oily to me you look like a, like a used car salesman so right. i think chalk stripes go best with textured cloth interesting like flannel or your tweeds yeah. but yeah. anything that has depth to it right that allows the stripe itself to sort of to you know that way you could play with the stripe like it doesn't said, look like it's painted it on. doesn't look like it's painted on exactly yes, yes. whereas on a on a on a on a worsted cloth it would look painted on you understand the yeah, difference i do i do this yes, looks yes. woven you can see it the woven, woven. Yes, and that's why you does. say it looks like a rope stripe uh -huh. because it's actually woven yeah. into the cloth yes. whereas if this were flat if this were just a worsted cloth it would look as though somebody just basically painted a line on it. Yes, I get that. I, I understand that. I'll have to go back home and look at my striped suits and make sure that I don't. <laughs> you have don't happen to have a chuck stripe in Worcester? <laughs> no, I've got I've got a, I've got a grey pinstripe, but it's not. It's worsted flannel. It's not pure. Plain it's not a woolen worsted. flannel. It's not a, not a not a, uh, woolly a woolen one like flannel. This, a fluffy one like this. This is. This is a woolen flannel. Yes, and of course, you know, there's a difference between a worsted flannel and a woolen mm. flannel. Mm. And it all comes down to the way the flannel itself is carded. Ah, oh, okay. Um, worsted flannel tends to be a bit more durable than woolen mm. flannel, mm. which is more spongy yeah, okay. uh, and loses shape a bit more easily. So, for instance, worsted flannel holds a crease better. Yep. Uh, because again, I always put up the caveat that I'm this not a worsted flannel. That, that exactly, I'm not a cloth technician, but the way uh, flannels, the way a worsted flannel is prepared, you know, there's almost a, you see almost like a twill. Yeah. When you look at it, you see sort of like a twill right. on it. You do. Um, but it's got sort of that fuzz. Yeah. Slight uh, fuzz that on it. Slight exists. fuzz on it, which sort of you know, sort of which means it's a flannel. Um, so, but this is a pure woolen flannel. And well, I like, like school flannel. Yes, I like woolen flannels because with the worsted flannels, again, you run into that situation where it's really very difficult to get the depth yep. Yep. in the flannel yep. because it's, it's, it's worsted. Yep. So you just don't have that sponginess. You don't have the depth and the thickness in the cloth to be able to get the weave or to yep. sort of to get the lines or if you were, say, window panes or plaids. Yeah. Yeah. Deep into the cloth. And isn't that interesting? And that makes, you know, so to, just to, to, to conclude uh, my statement, if you're looking for durability, something is going to sort of, let's say, a workhorse winter mm -hmm. suit, then you want to go for a worsted flannel. Right. Right. Because it's, you know, it's more robust. It's more durable. Yeah. A woolen flannel is not going to be as durable. It's probably going to wear out sooner yeah. than a worsted flannel. But, you understand? But it looks better. It looks visually, to me, it just looks yes. more. It's yes. got that old world charm to it. And the colors also are deeper, they are richer. The yes. patterns come through a bit more forcefully yeah, yeah, yeah. than, you know, than a worsted flannel. So, and this, and this follows on from what you were saying earlier about why a suit doesn't have to be a punishment. Because you can do things with it, either with the color for example, the maroon stripes or the burgundy stripes that we were looking at a moment ago, or the fabric itself. Correct. And depending what the merchant has done or the mill has done with the fabric, I think it's something to do with milling as well, isn't it? That makes it, gives it that texture. Well, it, like I said, it's the way it's milled mm -hmm. um, and carded. You know, I, yeah. I'm not a cloth technician, but I do know that the, there are several steps. Um, yeah. You know, the worsted flannels, for instance, they, they, they require more finishing. They're sort of finished yeah. to a higher degree. You know, everything is wool at the end of the day. Yes, yes. So the worsteds appear flatter because they go through, I think, more processes, uh, if I recall correctly, from, from my um, limited the, knowledge. They, they would. I was talking to uh, the guy from Harrison's last week. And he said, what he said was very interesting. He said that when they make the cloth, 
He said, because the weaving machine, the loom, is mm -hmm. running so fast, mm -hmm. you can get little bits of dust and things into the cloth. Correct. Apparently, what they do is they actually hang the entire piece in front of a light, and somebody walks past. It's called mending. And somebody walks past it and checks. And if he sees any little lumps or any little gaps in it, it has to be mended. Correct. Now, you can imagine that people like Fox Brothers, because they work in, in limited runs, and because of the price they charge and the reputation they have, they would have gone over this really carefully. Absolutely. And so you can be sure that there aren't going to be any flaws in it anywhere. Correct. You know, and, and so you're, you're talking about really a prince of cloths here. Now, this cloth comes from Fox. Can you get similar fabrics in ready to wear? Possibly. You know, possibly depending on the vendor or the maker, of course. Um, and at a certain price point, uh, you have to bear in mind that a lot of these fabrics, uh, they start out at a minimum 100 pounds a meter. Mm. Minimum. Mm. You know, for a fabric of this quality, you're looking at at least 100 to 150, some of them 200 pounds a meter. Mm. That's just the retail price yeah. from the mail. Now, if you're sort of a large manufacturer and you're buying in bulk, you might get a bit of a discount, but not that much. Yeah. So let's say you're a large manufacturer and you're making these suits and you're buying them at 80 pounds a meter, okay, which is still, let's say, 80 or 70 pounds a meter. Um, it takes about three meters, three and a half meters, let's say four meters. Let's say four, yeah. You know, for you and I, it takes about four and a half yeah. meters to make an Askoki drape suit. Uh, it takes... I think five. Four, four and a half, yeah. uh, four and a half meters. But let's say for the average person, it takes about four meters, right? At a hundred pounds mm. a meter. So right there, you know, just on the fabric alone, you're looking at 400 pounds. Yeah. Right? Equivalent yeah. of about, you know, say $600 or thereabout. Just okay? for the fabric. Just for the fabric. Yeah. And you're not even talking about the workmanship. Yeah. You're not talking about the labor and the trimmings and all the other stuff yeah. and the margin. The so. Overheads, yeah. To get an off-the-rack suit of this quality, or sort of, you know, with this quality, with the quality of this fabric of the rack, uh, you're not looking at, you know, just the cost alone. So, so let us say the fabric alone costs you six hundred dollars, mm -hmm. okay? And let's say, you know, it's manufactured. Let's assume it's not bespoke. Yeah. Let's assume this is a factory-made suit, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a bespoke suit is going to take you, of course, 80, 80 hours. Uh, or so to make between the coat and the trousers, right? You multiply that by, let's say, 20 pounds an hour or 25 pounds an hour for labor aggregate, right? So that's 1,600 pounds, right? That's just the labor, mm. equivalent of about $2,000. Mm. And then you add the fabric. So your cost is already $2,600, right? You haven't added the cost of your trimmings. You haven't added your margins. Mm -hmm. So... Anyone who's going to be selling that quality of suit bespoke, you're looking at north of three thousand yeah, dollars, easy, yeah, yeah. with with literally really with, for, with no really margin, just, just say, literally just just, cost, just, to, yes. just your cost, yes, right? Yes. Your cost is almost three thousand yeah. dollars. Now, for a manufacturer, you might be able to sort of get it manufactured at say twenty, you know, let's say twenty hours. Or, or, or per garment, or let's say 10, 10, 10 hours, you know, times whatever the labor cost is, you know, 10 hours times aggregate 30, right? 30, 40. So they're looking at $400. So there's a thousand right there. So there's a thousand right there. So for a manufacturer to be able to make a profit on this, it's going to be selling it at at least $1,500. Right now, a lot of them, because with a lot of manufacturers, you have to consider shipping, logistics, storefront, yeah, yeah, rent. Yeah. Usually, the rule of thumb in the industry is three times cost. So there you go. So if a manufacturer is, if his cost is a thousand dollars, based on our calculation, right, his retail for something like this quality of this cloth is going to be at least three thousand dollars retail MSRP yes. storefront. Yes. 
Yes. You understand? Yeah. To, to be able to get that sort of 3x markup that they need wow. to swallow or to to uh, to capture all their marketing mm -hmm. expenses, mm -hmm. their you know realty and, and all the other stuff that goes into large scale manufacturing. Well, that's if he owns the shop. But if he's if he's wholesaling it through retailers, then you're looking at even more. So that's so in other words, well, he could he could take less. Yeah, right? he could take less. So he could take so if his cost is a thousand and he's selling it through retailers, he could sell it for two thousand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then the retailer marks it up to three thousand. Yeah. But the point being that that this sort of the, the the care and workmanship that goes into just making the cloth, forget about the suit, that's another thing. The cloth itself, and I'm just feeling it here, and this is by the way something I wanted to ask you this evening. It feels it's not it doesn't feel sort of soft, but it feels it doesn't feel rough either. It I don't know how you would call it. When when People in the trade, Oki, talk about the hand of a cloth. What do they mean? Well, you know, it's an acquired um, skill. I think that at this uh, point, I could literally sort of, you know, with a blindfold, touch a cloth and sort of say, okay, it's got a good hand to it. It comes with sort of going through or thumbing through a lot, a lot of mm. cloth. And, and when they say it's got a good hand, it's just sort of the way it feels to the hand. And the, the higher, uh, better finished cloth just feels much more luxurious. It feels nicer, not necessarily softer. Mm. Um, if it's a tweed or a flannel, right, it sort of has that texture to it, it does or have roughness a to, to it. it yes. But, you know, if you, if you put this side by side with a flannel of uh, inferior quality or, or that is not on par with this, you would feel the difference. Right. You know, if you do, if you have the skill, right, if right. you've got the touch, you, I could feel the difference. Right. I could tell cheap flannel from, from, really? from high grade flannel. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, and from looking at it, how does one tell the difference between a top shelf flannel like this one and a sort of bog standard flannel. I think really it's hard to, well, you could do the feel test, of course. You could yeah. sort of do yeah. the, the touch test. If you didn't but, feel it. But um, the safer way to go about it is just basically by the mills. Right, okay, okay. So it's sort of like um, price bias yeah, in shopping. Okay. You know, there's always the thing that if, you, if you're not sure what the quality is, right, you start with the one with the highest yeah, price. Yeah, yeah. And usually, usually, price is an indicator of quality. Yes. Right? Yes, yes. So it is with cloth. Yeah. Right? So it is with cloth. You know, price and the mail right. it came from is right. usually an, a good indicator because our partners, for instance, Harrison's, mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. not uh, jeopardize their reputation true, true, by, true. you know, carrying substandard cloth. True. So, of course, they have to ensure that everything they have in their stable, in their portfolio is top notch. Same with Fox or any of the other top males. So for us in the trade, usually, um, or Dogdale for that matter, yes. uh, usually we curate a very limited number of males that we buy from. Yeah. And we know that whatever we touch from this male is bulletproof. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to worry about yeah, yeah, yeah. you know the suit becoming shiny or after a couple of years or so. Yes. To answer your question, um, the litmus test, really, there is really no hard and fast way if you're a novice. Yeah. If you're experienced, then you can sort of like, and you've got a trained thumb. Interesting. But if you're a novice, the best way to adjudge, as it were, the quality of the cloth is going to come down to, one, the mail it came from, yeah. and then two, the price, per meter, of course. Yes, and that... And the prices tend to go along with the mill, don't they? So, you, you, as you said, Fox can charge a premium because it's absolutely marvelous material. I mean, this simply, it, it almost feels like a coat, if you know what I mean. It's Because it's, it's, it's a thick fabric. Now, is this as, is this as heavy as the... It, it, it's really not, you know, I, it, it looks like it, but actually I wear these. I mean, not in the middle of the summer here. But I've worn this for shoots in the studio. I wear them. I mean, they're not, they're yeah. very wearable. They feel actually light when you have them on. Well, don't forget that flannel.
because it's fairly porous, isn't going to be, what's the word I want? It's not going to be unbearable, even in quite warm weather. But it traps heat because of the way it's woven. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, it's not openly woven. So flannel is woven, essentially the way it's woven is woven to trap heat. Okay. So it feels okay. loose, right? It feels like the yarns are, are slightly loose when you touch it, right? Mm -hmm. Especially woolen flannel, it's got yeah. that spongy yep. feel to yep. it. But the way it's woven, actually, it's woven to trap heat. So, uh, which is why it's a winter, a sort of a which cool weather cloth. And yet you wear it in the summer. People wear flannel playing cricket. Well, you have cricket flannels, cricket. you have summer flannels. You know, they tend to be lighter, 10, 11, 10 to 12 ounces. Right. But I don't like those. You ah. know, I, I don't like those. They're not very durable. Uh, you no, know, they wouldn't they're be. not very, if you, you know, if you're going to go flannel, I wouldn't go anything under 14 ounces. To me, real flannel, to get the, the get, to get the best out of flannel, you got to stay in the 14 to 18 ounce range, right? God bless you if you can go higher than 18 ounce, but 14 to 18 <laughs> ounce gives you that sweet spot where you're getting one, the insulation. Yeah. You know, you're sure you're getting, especially if it's woolen. Yeah. You're sure it's got sort of the sponginess enough that if it's a pattern flannel, for instance, the colors are really going to come through powerfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some of them have these like almost sort of variegated the way they're woven yep. with different yep. colors. So you're not going to get that color shine through unless the flannel is of a certain grade. Yeah, yeah. And the thinner you go, like 11, 12, 10 ounces, you lose that. Almost. Okay. You understand oh, what I yes, mean? Yes, of course. So, yes, yes. you know, to me, summer flannel is a bit of an oxymoron, mm. right? Uh, it's, 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 oh, it's, it's a bit of a, um, uh, what's the right word I'm looking yeah, for? But yeah, you understand what I mean? It's, it's a contradiction yes. in terms, absolutely. Yes. It's like, yes. you know, if you want to get a flannel, get a flannel. I don't understand summer flannel. You know, to a 10, 10, 10, 8, 9 ounce flannel doesn't make sense. Well, it's probably marketing because you see, you can charge a premium for flannel um, because, as you say, of the way it's woven and the amount of effort that goes into preparing the, the yarn. And, uh, but people want something for the summer. And of course, it's true that um, the lighter cloth might be better for the summer weather, but it depends not only on that. And you can have, if you have a very tightly woven, lightweight cloth, it's, you're going to feel warm in the summer if you've got a looser woven material, like the twist, for example, um, the Harrison's twist. High twist. The high twist. Uh, they, well, they call it spring ram, the which spring, is sort of their the version spring of the Cheviot spray. Yes, it's, it's, you're not going to find it's, it's, too, it's too warm in the warm weather. And I, I think this is misunderstood. Uh, there's an awful lot that goes into, and we've talked about it, and no doubt we'll talk about it again at some point, there's a lot that goes into understanding the weights, the different weaves, uh, the different types of wool, and so forth. Correct. But anyway, let's put this back up on the rack. Ah. Now, I wanted to take a quick look at this. For some of our viewers who have never been in a tailor's shop, mm -hmm. What do you call this? This is called the baste. This is the baste. Okay. Yes. Um, this is, do you want me to stand up? If you uh, wouldn't mind, because it's, it, we'll get a better look at it. So this is the baste. Um, and a baste is basically is a skeletal framework. Uh, so when, when we get your measurements, at least the way we do it, yeah, yeah. when we get your measurements, we create your pattern on our CAD system. And that pattern, uh, we create a digital pattern is made into a test of fit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Which essentially is sent to, you know, so part of that test of fit is this, right? Right, okay. It's a skeletal, it's basically to check uh, for fit or sort yep, of check yep. to make sure that we have all the uh, measurements mm -hmm, correct, mm -hmm. at least close enough. So usually we have a piece of canvas, some people call this interlining, Yes, yes. but really yes, this okay. is horsehair. So this is a canvas. This is a canvas okay, and it we runs... We talked about canvas a couple of sessions ago. It runs all the way from the top. So of, they actually put that in here. Right, all the way yeah. from the top here. Yeah. Yeah, there we are. Right, you can yes. see it runs all the way from the Starts top here. There, yes. Starts at the shoulder seam 
and goes all the way to the bottom. Yes. Here. Yes. Okay, so that's what you call a fully canvassed. And they're coat. using the canvas for the lapels. Well, of course, because remember it folds that over. the canvas is what gives the jacket its shape. Yeah. You cannot shape a garment. And that's why when you see a fused garment, you don't see those rolls. Yeah, you cannot yeah. create this three dimensional yeah. view to it. What gives a, a jacket this 3D is the canvas. Mm. You can mold the canvas, so the canvas actually molds to your body because this is a natural fiber. And then it's got this black. It, this stuff is a chest there. piece. This is the chest piece, right? Okay. Okay. This is this is all the chest piece, and this is sort of its. So it's skeletal, but they have put a lot in. It's got padding here, shoulder padding here. Well, just it's minimal. Got the minimal shoulder padding. Just minimal. Also. This is again. This is just a basted garment, so it's just basically skeletal. And just this is to check to, for to test. Just to check for fit. The fit and okay. the, and what's interesting and by the way this is something you don't see often is you don't get a chance to see is the way that the armholes are made you see they're not straight they come out of course and then up here so there's an, a curve there well, it depends again on was, your it depends on your proportions but I just thought it was interesting because many people will never have seen the inside of a of a jacket or see the way it's put together. So this is how it starts. This is the torso, obviously. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the line here for where the pockets right, are going to go. this is where the pockets are going to go. And then you've got to put your buttons and there's a little mark there. Correct. And then this is this is the canvas here, everybody. Horsehair canvas. Fairly light canvas, actually. Actually, this, this, is, this is quite heavy. Is it? This is heavy ah. horsehair. This is one of the heavier grades we oh, use. Oh, really? Yes, this is horsehair, for sure. This is one of the heavier grades. The lighter ones, you would feel it. It almost sort of, it's almost very transparent. Where you could see, mm -hmm. you can feel the toughness. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, this is high-grade horsehair. Ha what do they call Ham? Hamming? There's a word. What, what's, what's, what's the word? Ha ham? Not hamster. Do well, you know the word I mean? I don't recall. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, speaking of horsehair, many years ago, I had a, a blue serge blazer, and periodically, you'd feel something up here, and you'd like, pull out a piece, an actual piece of horsehair, horsehair yes. and as the jacket aged, these bits of horsehair started sticking, sticking out, sticking out, out of through it. the serge, and you, yeah. could, and you could pull them out. That's from the canvas. That that's from the uh, uh, the real horsehair canvas. Correct. Isn't that interesting? And and they've been using horsehair, I presume, for a, well over a hundred years. Of course, not of course. Longer you than can that. I mean, you know, you can. There are different fabrics that you can use for canvassing, right? You can use linen. Actually, yep. there's even yep. cotton canvas for summer garments. Oh, okay. So, but horsehair, if you're really you know, looking at sort of heavier garments or heavier fabrics, mm. um, and you really want to create that shape. I love horsehair and I use them even on summer garments because, you know, it's really very difficult to mold a garment yeah, if you don't yeah, have the yeah, right yeah. foundation. Yeah, yeah. So to me, I use horsehair. I mean, really, the difference in weight is, I mean, really not. I mean, well, unless it's minimal, it's minimal yeah. and I mean, unless you're built like a like like a child and you can't carry <laughs> an extra pound on your coat or half a That's pound right. or half an ounce, but usually I, I recommend horsehair because you just it just holds shape a lot better, mm. even with your summer garments. Interesting. Well, that's all we've got time for, and we didn't get to gun clubs, unfortunately or or fortunately, depending on what you what you think of gun clubs. We'll try to cover them next time. Thank you all very much. Been a pleasure. Uh, thank you, Oki. Pete, and as always. For all the knowledge. Thank you for having me. Uh, most welcome. Most welcome. It's your place. I mean, come on. And we look forward, everybody, to seeing you here next time, Studio One. Thank you.